With Laurel Wilt's devastating effects on the Florida avocado industry, it's easy to see why South Florida growers are considering almost any possible type of control and mitigation solution, even if it means they could be shooting in the dark. Since the disease has gotten into South Florida in 2012, uh, we've lost about 100,000 trees to 120,000 trees, which equates to about 13% of our production. UF-IFAS Dade County Tropical Fruit Extension agent Jeff Wasileski says growers are appalled at the possibility of losing more long-established tropical avocado trees to laurel wilt. What's at stake, he says, is a huge segment of Florida agriculture. The avocado industry in South Florida is about 6,400 acres. It's worth $100 million uh, annually and it's the fourth biggest fruit crop in the state behind citrus, strawberry, and blueberries. To save the industry from destruction by laurel wilt, research at the uf IFAS Tropical Research and Education Center, or TREC, is providing strategies for maintaining healthy groves. Dr. Jonathan Crane, uf IFAS Tropical Fruit Specialist at the center, covers the fundamentals. Current recommendations for laurel wilt include early detection of laurel wilt affected trees, and that means scouting, looking for trees that are affected. Um, immediate roguing or sanitation, and that means removing the tree, destroying the wood as quickly as possible. Um, if you have an alternative to that, is prophylactically injecting trees with a fungicide to protect the trees from getting the pathogen in the first place. Crane says there is no control for the pathogenic fungus that is a cure, but that fungicidal treatments can protect for 12 to 24 months. So these fungicides have to be applied before the tree comes down or is, is infected with the disease, um, and it has to get inside the tree. So these are systemic fungicides that have to be placed in the tree. Crane recommends either treating all of a grove's trees with a fungicide beforehand, or, if that's too expensive, to do a spot treatment, treating the two or three trees that are healthy on either side of a laurel wilt affected tree. The way this is done, there are two methods. One is an infusion method, which is sort of, you can think of as an IV system, where you place the liquid fungicide inside the tree, diluted in water. The other is usually an injection treatment where you're using a higher, much higher concentration of the fungicide and injecting it into various parts of the tree. Crane says the idea is to wall off the disease spread, that by protecting those trees that are next to a tree affected by laurel wilt, you're going to prevent the disease from moving from the laurel wilt affected tree to the adjacent healthy trees. Wasileski adds some growers are applying their own ideas to the disease's control. While Trek warns that such independent experimentation may not be effective, the center is interested in evaluating three grower-devised control measures. One method removes only canopies of trees adjacent to a positively infected tree, leaving the scion, branches, and roots of neighboring trees intact. This method consists of reducing trees to what appear as large hat racks. Crane said this is called the barrier method, and he feels growers might be onto something. It's not a recommended method at this point, but it's something we are interested in investigating to see and to hopefully figure out when it works, if it works, um, and how it, how it could be implemented. The barrier method begins with growers scouting for trees showing signs of laurel wilt. The second phase begins immediately after a tree with laurel wilt symptoms is located. They then immediately uh, hat rack or stump uh, the adjacent trees to the laurel wilt affected trees. And you can see that um, over here. And the idea behind this method that they're trying is that by removing the canopy, they are removing the transpiration or the water loss from the tree. And so the idea is that if these trees are connected by the roots 
and that pathogen can move from the infected tree, which this is a tree, it's got a red X on it. This is a tree that has been identified to have laurel wilt. And so the idea is that they would, by removing the canopy of the adjacent trees, they are stopping the transpiration of the adjacent trees, and they are stopping the disease from moving through the root system to the adjacent trees. And then they come in and they remove the affected trees completely. They pull them out of the ground and uh, shred them and destroy them. Crane says growers are hopeful that the adjacent trees, now reduced to stumps, will regrow and resume their production of fruit. And the idea with these large trees, if you can get them back into fruit production, when they come back into production in two or three years, they come back into production at a much higher level than if you had planted a brand new tree. So this is something they're experimenting with. It's something we're interested in testing further to see, number one, you know, just does it work and how often does it work and maybe what are the parameters that could tell us when it would work or when it would not work. Another option being investigated is the bag method. This is another grower devised possible control of floral wilt that Crane views as a strong candidate for Trek research. There has been some work done uh, in, in laboratories to show that the laurel wilt pathogen is sensitive to high temperatures. And so the idea of the bagging method is to try to heat treat the avocado tree to disinfest it of the pathogen. Crane cautions that currently this is solely an experiment on the grower's part. It is not a Trek recommendation. This is something that we're interested also at looking at in a more formal way, but the idea is to identify a tree that is showing or beginning to show the symptoms of laurel wilt, cutting the canopy off, covering the tree with clear plastic, sealing it uh, along the ground you know, with soil, and then leaving it there. Um, in some cases, they're leaving it up to several months, and then removing the bag and then the idea is that the tree would regrow and eventually the canopy would regrow and begin production again. So again, this is something that uh, producers are investigating on their own. And again, it's something that we are also interested in looking at. A newer development and perhaps more economical application of grower-devised preventive treatments is drenching or simply saturating the base of the tree with a fungicidal solution, then keeping the soil moistened with the mixture. Our video segments showcasing efforts to mitigate the laurel wilt disease also show that vast amounts of data are being captured and measured for use. To keep up with and quantify that collection, we learned that researchers are turning to a relatively new tool, artificial intelligence, or AI. In our next segment, plant pathologist Karen Garrett touts the role of AI in tracking combinations of conditions leading to specific behavioral responses, and with that, reducing the time needed to combat the laurel wilt disease. Music